So a few weeks ago, I went to the Calgary Rock and Mineral Show and I added to my collection of minerals and meteorites. So yeah, a few years back, I originally got into the hobby of mineral collecting by looking for meteorites. And it was as simple as walking around piles of rock with a magnet on the end of a stick. Then eventually I got a metal detector. And uh, well, I never really found any. So I uh, just started finding them at collector shows and then uh, bought little samples. And I think they're really cool. So the price of meteorites can vary. They very well can go well above the price of gold per gram. A lot of it includes where the meteorites came from and how rare they are and how easily it is to get it out of the country of origin. And some of the minerals I found are really kind of neat because you can find unique ones with little crystals inside them. So yeah, I thought I'd show you my collection of meteorites so far and I thought that maybe I'll, I'll show you kind of the properties of each one, see how magnetic they are or how uh, electrically conductive they are. You know, some of them can be made of iron, lots with nickel, and some with copper. And we'll take a closer look. So this meteorite fell in Argentina about four to 5,000 years ago. I think it's called the uh, Campo del Cio meteorite. It was a big meteorite, about 30.8 tons, which is huge. It left about 36 craters when it fell. So the vendor I bought this one off of told me that uh, this meteorite actually broke off into two major chunks. One stayed up and landed on the uh, mountain high up and it stayed there. The uh, second half kind of went down into a valley and landed somewhat in a river. And you can only guess over four to 5,000 years it eroded away and got all smooth. So this one was from the upper fall and uh, you can tell it's all big and chunky there and it's got lots of uh, ragged little specks and uh, pieces all over it's kind of neat and it's quite heavy to hold too so I will show you the uh, weight of it so the weight of this one is 5.02 grams but just the weight of it in your hand makes you feel wow this is pretty heavy you can hear it there Okay, so what I have here is one of my super earth magnets here. These things are stupid powerful, so you've got to be careful with this. And we will see how it works on this meteorite from Argentina. Oh, wow. Pulled that one. Oh, that's tough to get off. Yeah, you can see how far away it actually pulled it. Yeah, lots of force on that one. Yeah, that's tough to get off. So very, very magnetic. Oh, you can see it pulled out there too. Yeah, magnetic. You can see it left a mark on there too. So the last test I'll do is conductivity. If it's a metal, it should be conductive unless it's made of uh, aluminum. And I just have it on conductivity here. And when you touch them together, you get a closed circuit and it beeps. So let's try it out on the meteorite here and see what happens. Oh yeah, big time. Very conductive. Okay, let's move on to the next meteorite. Okay, this is a cool meteorite. I, I saw this and I couldn't resist. This is part of the Russian 2013 meteorite. If you uh, do some internet searches for it, you'll see it going through the air. It blew out thousands of windows across hundreds of miles. It's a, it was a super bolide and it fell on February 15th at 9.20 a.m. The size of the, the meteorite was about 20 meters in size. I think most of it just exploded in air and it because it entered at uh, 50,000 kilometers a second. So when I saw this one for sale, I thought uh, I had to have this. So the vendor that sold me this one told me that uh, when the meteorite fell, a bunch of scientists and collectors went into Russia and uh, found a bunch of fragments 
shortly thereafter the um, the government said uh, no we're done and they booted them all out and did not allow anyone else in so this could be something of a, a rarity so you can see on here that it's just it's blemished it looks like it's been through a fireball of sorts we'll check out some of its properties and its weight now so that one comes in at 1.29 grams okay here's the magnet test very powerful magnet and it's not as magnetic as the other one it's actually light lightly magnetic so not too much in the way of uh, iron type nickel type metals in this one okay and let's check continuity my guess is not because it's not very magnetic and I'm not getting anything there's a lot it looks like it could be oxidized on the front and that might have something to do with it if you scratch a little bit into it you might get it to be conductive but I don't want to drill any holes in this specimen so I'm gonna call this one not very conductive if at all okay this meteorite is from white court alberta which is just north of where i live not too far it's uh a, actually kind of a neat one because it's uh, only 1100 years old there's a uh, buried fragments that you can find and it's interesting it's underneath a layer of carbon because there was a forest fire about 100 years after this meteorite fell and burned down the forest around it so this uh crater was actually not even found until around 2007 uh, because it's in a heavily wooded area and the crater is almost non-existent to see from the ground uh, I think it was found with aerial photography so this white quart fragment comes in at 3.03 .03 grams and let's do the magnet test on this one very magnetic yeah it's got a good grab to it yeah big time so definitely a iron meteorite meteorite for sure and checking conductivity it's actually very oxidized so I highly doubt we'll get anything off of it and I'm not but I'm pretty sure if I drilled little holes into this it would it would buzz but I don't want to ruin the specimen of course so the other properties I think give it away okay well this bad boy here it's the biggest one in my collection it's actually came from Siberia and it fell February 12th 1947 you can see it's actually so big that it doesn't fit in that case because it actually comes in this case okay and we'll check the weight of this guy no doubt it's the biggest one I have so it comes in at 13.14 grams pretty big okay this part's got me worried a little bit it should pull it right away oh yeah yeah this has got some pull to it pretty magnetic ah there we go do that again for you zoom in a bit here for you Oh yeah. All right, let's check continuity. There's not much oxidation on this, so I expect it to have continuity. And sure enough, it does. Okay, I know lots of you on my channel here like to see gold, so We'll just do the same thing on a gold nugget, just to compare. So this Whopper comes in at 0.94 grams. All right, so what do you think is gonna happen? Is it gonna be magnetic? Is it gonna get any pull? No, 
You know why? Because gold is not magnetic. This is why we can use magnets to separate the magnetite, the black sands from the pans and separate the gold. Makes it easy. Okay, and now we'll check out the properties of gold conductivity. Do you guys think it's gonna be conductive or not? Well, there's a reason it ends up in so many circuit boards. Yeah, that's right. It's very conductive. In fact, its ability to give up electrons is one of the most important reasons gold is in high demand nowadays. Very important. So this is a cool uh, specimen that my friend James found in the uh, BC interior, I think around the Kelowna area. And it's, um, it's got little deposits of calcite on it. And you can see that there's a lattice structure and some crystallizations that are forming within the voids. So it, it probably grew in some type of uh, probably water that was saturated with calcium and it grew the crystals out. So one other property that was really neat with certain crystals is that they tend to glow in the dark. So I'm gonna show you this if I can. For that, I'm going to have to turn off the lights. And you put a black light on. You can see it fluoresce. That is just neat. Here, I'll turn off all the lights so you can see it. Okay, so the lights are off. And I got the black light here. Oh yeah, you can see it just goes. There's other parts of the rock that fluoresce as well, which is kind of neat. Let's just examine the other part. I don't think I've looked at the rest of the rock. Some crystals up there, in the middle there. There's a little cave in here. Not quite the crystal lattice that we saw in the other one, but that is kind of neat. Right there on the end. Yeah, so that's neat. I like these type of rocks. I'm gonna have to find more of these. All right, everyone. Well, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this stuff, please uh, like and uh, make some comments and please subscribe to the channel. I'll uh, listen to your comments and maybe we'll go out and find some of these. I want to go out and find some opals in the future and we're going to go find some other minerals. I think it will be fun. So, oh yeah, look, look at that corner there. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I like that. So share your experiences. Uh, go to my webpage. Uh, go prospecting .ca or go prospecting worldwide on the Facebook group and uh, share your photos, share your experiences. It's all about having fun. So, all right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Hey guys, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks.